organization and levels of six sigma okay levels of six sigma it's basically green belt yellow belt black belt master black belt champion okay? they come under the levels of six sigma organization is within one institution how people who have different levels of six sigma or how people have different experiences, work experiences, seniority, job position, how they function with each other, okay, when they are working in a Six Sigma portfolio, okay. So, these are the two topics that we will discuss today. So, first we will discuss the Six Sigma organization and then we will go to the levels. Those who have a textbook, you can mention the page number in the chat box. I don't have the textbook, so I'm not, I'm unaware of the page number. So under any Six Sigma program, members of the organization just imagine you are in a hospital and your hospital has a Six Sigma project going on, okay? So, a lot of people will be part of this Six Sigma project from leadership to the team member, okay? Individual team employee who is part of this Six Sigma. Everyone will have their own specific roles to play, okay? And they will be given a title as well, okay? A title that may be slightly different from their job profile, but a title in the project, okay? And this title, along with this organizational structure, is a very structured format. And it is important to have this kind of structure so that you can implement Six Sigma throughout the organization without much conflicts or hiccups. So... There are seven specific responsibilities or we can call it as role areas in a Six Sigma program. Okay. The first one is leadership. Okay. Could be the CEO, director, owner, administrator of the institution or hospital you may be working for wherever a Six Sigma project has been carried out. Okay. So a leadership team or a council they define the goal and objectives of the Six Sigma project, okay? What would be the objective? If you are running a Six Sigma project, objective should be there, okay? Why you are putting a Six Sigma project in the first place? You have, you should have a clear directional objective, okay? Just like a corporate leader who will set a tone and course to achieve an objective, Six Sigma uh, council also will have a leader who will set predetermined goals. This have to be achieved. Okay, this much percentage of medical errors have to come down by the end of this month. Okay, so like that. So specific objectives and goals are decided by leadership. So they define the purpose of Six Sigma project uh, program, why this organization or why we are doing a Six Sigma project in our hospital. Okay, they have to explain the results of going, uh, like how it is going to benefit the customer. Okay, how this project will benefit the customer what will be the schedule of work within what by what date you have to end this project how the schedule will be you have to have a mean review and oversight of the project as well as a leader you have to support the team members involved in the six sigma project so these all are the roles of the leader or anyone who is in the leadership category then you have the sponsor. The second role is of the sponsor. So sponsors are also kind of a high level individual. They are not actively involved in your project on day to day basis. They are more involved when you are facing some challenging situation. Okay. And whomever you go to for reference, okay, they may also not find a solution in such cases. Sponsors will be responsible. Uh, and uh, they understand these are high level individuals who understand Six Sigma concepts and they are committed to whatever project, Six Sigma project they take up, they are committed to its success. Okay. And uh, they act as a problem solver. When a problem occurs, they, their role has more value. A sponsor will have a more value when there is a problem. 
okay otherwise if uh, if the six sigma project is going smoothly without any major events okay sponsor will not be called and usually six sigma projects are led by a full time high level champion champion be, uh, it's a it's a person who is like uh, who must have written some articles who are well known in that industry because of their six sigma skills And sponsors are usually involved in improvement activities in the areas of their responsibilities, how that we can improve the situation. So usually sponsors are dedicated to work in this area to, pro to solve the problem, to improve the current situation. Okay, this all comes under sponsor's responsibility. Whenever there's a problem, their, their role gets activated. Then we have implementation leader. So this is a person who is responsible for supervisory role. Okay, they supervise the Six Sigma team. Are they present on the or absent? Okay, are they uh, there in the project room at the right time? Are they punctual? Okay, are they getting their work done daily? Work done? Is it completed on time? Okay. To ensure that the team uh, of work has been completed in the manner how it was desired. Okay. So these are the, these supervise, basically implementation leader does the supervisory role. Okay. They ensure that the implementation plan is successful and uh, they also get involved in problem solving. And if they can't solve the problem, sponsors will be called. They will give the training to the uh, team members as well as and when required. So these are some of the key responsibilities of implementation leader. Okay. Usually a kind of a supervisor. Okay. Sponsor is not a supervisor. You go to the sponsor when a problem is uh, there. Okay. Implementation leader is always there. They check on you on a daily basis, on a weekly basis. They give you target. You have to complete the target. Okay. Next is coach. So coach is a Six Sigma expert or consultant who sets a schedule, defines the result of the project. Okay. Who, if any conflict is happening between the team members, a coach will take care of it. Okay. Coach is more of more or less like a class teacher, class teacher, not a subject teacher. Okay, coach is more like a class teacher. They are responsible for the team member. They are responsible for uh, the day to day uh, the uh, work of the team members. Okay, they are more hands on with the team uh, team members. They are more on on the operational side because small tips and small hiccups that comes uh, comes in the project on a daily basis. Those those have to be solved by the coach. If team members are fighting among themselves, coach will resolve it, okay? And sometimes the coach is kind of a go-between for sponsor and leadership as well, like between a, a principal and the owner of a school, how the class teacher may have to maintain that employer-to-employer uh, -employer challenging situation. Coach usually does that work in Six Sigma. If the team is having some problem, they, the coach will go meet the sponsor or the leadership and convey it. Scheduling the work for each team member. Mediating any disagreements or conflict and resistance to the program as well. So these all are the functions of coach. Then we have team leader. Team leader is kind of a class monitor, okay, class monitor. He or she, they themselves are a student. They themselves are a team member. They also have to do the same job what team members have to do, but they are representing the team, okay. Team leaders are more or less rep representing the team, okay. If the class has or some information has to be given to the class, okay, uh, or information has to be collected from the class, teachers will usually call the class monitor. Okay, and give them the information and sometimes teachers will call the class monitor to ask what is happening in the class okay what issues they are 
if the class is having some issues, class monitor will go and give the, uh, like not every 50 students or 100 students in a class will barge into the chamber of principal or teachers, okay? A representative will go. Two or three representatives will go. So these are the team leaders. They themselves are team members, okay? But they are given a leadership position within the team just to look after the communication disagree agreements, okay? What's actually happening? Being a part of the team, how things are different for you as coming to a part of the administration. So responsibilities of team member usually includes communication with sponsor in defining the project goals, rational, picking and assisting the team members, other resource allocation, who will get what resources to complete the project. Keeping an eye on the schedule of the project, what coach has given, does everyone complete it on right time or not? These comes under the team leader. Then we have team member. So team member is kind of a student, okay? They are uh, qualified with Six Sigma Green Belt. Uh, an employee or any, any a team member is an employee who works in the Six Sigma project, okay? They are given specific duties that they have to complete within the scheduled time. They have deadlines that they have to meet. And they usually, they are the executors of Six Sigma assignments, okay? to put things into work, to make the Six Sigma uh, function properly in the hospital, teaching the staffs of how, what is the situation going on, okay? So these all are the responsibilities of a team member. Then you have process honor. Anyone who takes responsibility for the process after Six Sigma has been completed. Sometimes a Six Sigma project is successful, sometimes it is unsuccessful. Sometimes Six Sigma project may not give you the desired results. How do you want to do it? So at that time, Six Sigma project may be, could be a, a failure. So in that case, the process on, of owner will take the responsibility. Is it clear to all regarding the Six Sigma organization? Coming to the Six Sigma training levels. or we call it the levels of Six Sigma. So each level of Six Sigma, they have a different certification for that. And that certification implies the role that the stakeholder or whoever has done the qualification is qualified to enact these responsibilities of, responsibilities of Six Sigma. And it also helps in equipping trade personnel to be full active participants of Six Sigma. So first is the white belt. This is the first level of certification who have not undergone any prior formal certification, they go for white belt. In this session, um, usually the Six Sigma white belt holders, they will have an overview of effective methods needed for Six Sigma, vocabularies used, what kind of words that we use in Six Sigma or Lean Six Sigma, okay, that is taught to them. Like reading a chapter of Six Sigma in your uh, college days, okay, or reading a paragraph about Six Sigma, 
in your college days. Okay, that all come under there. That usually comes under the diploma of Medical Six Sigma. So it shows them how they are the ones who contribute towards efficiency, how, what is the importance of Six Sigma, they will have an awareness how Six Sigma projects are done, okay, what is actually the requirement of Six Sigma in a hospital, they will have an understanding of it. Next is yellow belt. So here, some exposure to the concepts of Six Sigma is given, okay, some basic knowledge of um, mean, standard deviation, okay, range, it is given. They can also have training sessions, yellow uh, belt practitioners, they can be given training training sessions for two days, okay, and in within that two days, like a crash course, about Six Sigma will be taught to them. See, they will usually uplift the project that had limited scope and they will also help the managers who are at the belts that are higher in their level. Okay, they usually go around what the Six Sigma Green Belt Manager has to told them to do. Or so that, that comes under Six Sigma Yellow Belt. Next is Six Sigma Green Belt. For getting Six Sigma Green Belt certification, you have to attend a full course, just like how you are attending. You have to attend the live webinars, okay? Full course has to be attended. And this course exposes you to the methods of Six Sigma, how to develop, improve, reduce variation in services and processes, okay? And uh, at the end of this course, you will know how to apply the frameworks, which are problem solving, for example, DMAC, okay? At your, even in your daily life, you can use the DMAC methodologies as well. And when you are a Six Sigma Green Belt, at least $50,000 of uh, revenue you have to bring to the hospital or your healthcare organization or you have to save at least $50,000 of revenue. That is the target given to green belts. They also have the knowledge to apply leadership tools and implementation of action. Six Sigma Black Belt, it is a much advanced level of training and upgradation of skills are done. Basic is your green belt and after that black belt upgradation is done. After completion of green belt certification, only then you can go for black belt. There are some prerequisites to be a black belt. You should have a previous lean Six Sigma knowledge to the leaders or stakeholders. We should become the master of their skills and knowledge, which you have to apply when planning hospital. So a project charter, Gantt chart, more difficult tools are usually used by a master black belt or black belt for the real project. And they can teach the students as well. Next, you have champion. So a professional will be called champion when he or she is the manager in the upper level of level leading the lead Six Sigma. Okay, they could work as consultants as well. Okay, uh, based on the number of objectives that are set by the leaders, champions are here that the only the objectives that will give you the major initiatives has to be uh, um, uh, empowered rather than all the list that is done by the administration department.
So champions, they write books, they manage theories, okay? So, uh, the major champions of Six Sigma, whatever theories they have established, you are studying about that theory as well, okay? So these things come under the Six Sigma training levels. A small assignment for Six Sigma, you can use uh, the textbook as well or Google as well. You can list out all the methodologies that you use in Six Sigma, write it down in a piece of paper or you can make a file as well. In which, uh, which type of methodology is used in Six Sigma, DMAC, DFSS, okay? So uh, write, the, uh, write down the different methodologies used in Six Sigma. Apart from the ones that is already given in the textbook, what other methodologies you can find out to do a Six Sigma project. To do a Six Sigma project, methodology is required. DMAC is one methodology, DFSS, DMA, DV, okay? These are the different methodologies. What more you can add? Google it, so use internet and find out. 